let's talk about COVID-19 lockdown this past year. Uh, certainly an anecdotally, people have uh, shared on different social media, and we've heard it here in our church family too, that it's, it's added extra stress on marriages and families. Um, from, from you guys' perspective, I mean, what have you seen, uh, especially with what this has created this past year for, for marriages and families? Yeah. Well, first of all, if we just do a quick review, when we think of COVID, we think of the political unrest. Uh, we think of uh, just a global shutdown in our area, fires and smoke, and now ice, and then school completely shutting down, mm -hmm. athletics, choir, church, normal life, we were just shown we are not in control of as much as we thought. Mm -hmm. And when that dynamic occurs, what we see primarily with couples and families are two main things. One is this time of, let's call it spiritual squeezing. So we've been physically in our schedule, in our life squeezed. And oftentimes that physical squeezing brings out the areas of uh, struggle and weakness that we have not grown in have not addressed personally. Maybe we didn't even know it was there. But also there are times when we're squeezed that it brings up dynamic fruit. Dynamic fruit, which is there have been some good things in our lives that now are at our foundation and at our core, which we hope is faith in Jesus Christ and that we're rooted in the word of God. And that when we're squeezed, the good fruit comes out as well. And so we're seeing those two extremes with families and couples as they encounter these many trials that we've experienced these last year and a half. Yeah, I think, I think by nature, we, we are ones that like predictability and, and comfort. And um, that, that predictability, that feeling like life is gonna be normal, um, what I've experienced in the past will be consistently experienced in the future. And, and COVID has really tested that. And, um, and again, that's where, um, when our circumstances are tested, it shows up a lot in our relationships. And so, you know, families who now maybe have one or both spouses working at home, kids at home, you have this incredible dynamic now for really uh, showing what maybe some of those areas for, for potential growth are. And, um, and we always like to frame it that way. I mean, we, we're all in the process of growing and, and, and looking at trials as opportunities to maybe reveal some of those areas where we wish we were uh, responding more Christ-like. Mm -hmm. um, and so we try to frame it in that language because it, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit more um, positive, mm -hmm. but it, it's really challenging mm -hmm. and it really has been a difficult season and it doesn't look like it's coming to a nice end. So I think you know, we're really about encouraging um, couples and families. How do we how do we strengthen up mm -hmm. for the long haul? That mm -hmm. that perseverance piece that you know that's just such a theme in Scripture, and 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 I can see that definitely the Lord is giving us opportunity to develop perseverance for the for the future. So yeah, I was going to say that collective loss of control that we've we've heard about is certainly just created on so many levels. Uh, anxiety for people and people have had to be at home a lot more together yeah. and that always causes you know good and bad like you guys had just mentioned you have the two extremes um i mean you have you guys seen some i guess some healthy practices for that more together time uh, does it involve taking a few more breaks maybe <laughs> getting out of the house a little bit yeah. and how, how does that dynamic work because I think we're going to be kind of in some form of lockdown for a little bit while, while longer. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I think that where we'd like to start first is we want to start with the heart condition. And the heart condition is now going to manifest actually things that we can do. And when we're under this type of trial and stress, uh, we tend to feel sorry for ourselves, uh, get angry at God, get angry at the circumstances. We can have fear and anxiety. And when we allow ourselves to be carried away by those things, it reminds me of James, which says the anger of man cannot accomplish the righteousness of God. And so if we look at that principle in a broader sense, 
not just anger, but anxiety, fear, worry, even entitlement. We don't deserve this. I don't deserve what's going on. What, will, it, what it will lead to is internally having a heart that is now going to be prone to discouragement and conflict. Mm -hmm. Or what we read in scripture in Romans, it's, it's the kindness of God. It's the kindness of God that leads to repentance. And it is also then the kindness of Laura and I in a marriage, in a marriage, in a family with the kids that is going to lead to the good and fruitful things. So we start off with a, a heart condition and the heart condition is our thinking and the decision-making we make with our heads. And it's also our emotions. And then we have to then come up with good strategies to figure out how to now still be able to not just survive during this time, but actually this is an opportunity to thrive. When we encounter trials in life, it's actually a positive way to look at it is it's, it's a positive way to allow and live out the gospel. And so then it starts in our heart and then strategies for living in the gospel might look like, what are some things that you would encourage families to think about? Well, I, I think, I think um, you know, teaching families uh, or families learning that flexibility. I think a lot of times we've become very dependent in the success of our relationship on our busyness. Mm. We, we aren't a people who, who know how to really to rest well or to, um, to be still. And so I think that's a, sure. it's a great opportunity to really put that into practice. What does that mean mm -hmm. just to be um, mm -hmm. as a couple? Uh, you know, in, in including uh, family mm -hmm. members in that. Um, and so and so being more intentional about being comfortable with that and talking about ways that that we can um, that we can make that that individual couple time or family time more intentional with with the purpose of of being okay without the busyness. And I think when we do that, all of a sudden we begin to, recognize that um, there are areas that we have for potential growth in that. Mm -hmm. um, so if Carl and I are um, interacting and we've been very dependent upon um, the um, busyness of our, our relationship, we're just going in two different directions. And as long as his path mm -hmm. and my path don't, don't have any conflict or they're somewhat supportive, um, then we can do really well. But it's completely different if now we're together all the time. And now all of a sudden, you know, whose, whose opinion or whose desire or whose fear is going to win in this circumstance. Mm -hmm. And so um, being able to communicate about that, to recognize what are those heart conditions that are really driving us and be able to share those things and, and talk about them. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think that communication piece becomes mm -hmm. really important. And in practical ways during this time, our business has actually cut down as well. Uh, we've done things like do meal prep together, do special meals mm -hmm. you know, that the family likes, uh, doing them actually together, not just mom or dad, but including the kids. We have adult children, but we also have extended family that have younger kids, so including them. Um, in the spring that is coming up, today is a decent day. Uh, last spring, when COVID was really shut down, we were doing a lot of walking outdoors, uh, trying to follow the rules, but also just getting out and stretching our legs. Uh, when it was raining, um, a couple of my daughters decided that we wanted to put together some puzzles, and we would just put together puzzles, and we would talk during that time about all kinds of situations that were going on in life. Um, games, Laura got into some different uh, theme games that we were getting into. And I think those be, you mean like uh, video games, Laura? Uh, well, no, so no, we're doing uh, more like uh, strategy games, you know, <laughs> not video games. Like what was the, the ticket to ride, the yeah, ticket to ride ticket series. To ride. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think that going back to where I started, it's the heart and mind that then those activities create now the potential. So we could, we could put a list on, on, on the wall and say, on Monday, we're going to do this and Tuesday, this and this and this. But if we're doing it just as a behavior, 
that might not produce what we're hoping to see in the family environment and relationships. Mm -hmm. But if we're starting with the idea that I, I want to live Jesus with my marriage, in my marriage and with my family, my children and our close associates, our community, that then it's an opportunity and that those things might be uh, the opportunity or the conduit to living out the, the, the qualities of Christ. And um, in our situation, we've been meeting with about two or three different families for Bible study. And because church hasn't been what it was, uh, we would also then include, you know, a, a lunchtime afterwards and, and try to do some community there. Otherwise, we've been very isolated. So having people in our home as, you know, the boundaries allow um, was something that was one of the only connection points that we've had other than Zoom. And then Zoom gets right, tired right. after a while. <laughs> well, I was going to say, uh, you know, speaking of, of the Zoom thing, we all kind of had to learn that technology through all of this. And um, yeah, it just doesn't quite replace, you know, that physical handshake or that, you know, even that hug. Um, I, I know many of us are excited when we can actually <laughs> hug each other again yeah, and have more people over to our house. It's something that Jackie and I love to do is um, we love food. And, and that's been a real interesting thing for us during this time, too, is that you find some different skills. We, we did our, our garden for the first time. And I think uh, th there's a great opportunity for families to maybe try some some new things that maybe they just time didn't allow because we've you know all been so busy in our lives and not taking breaks normally this is this has created new opportunities i think